Hi, welcome to Briones Pickleball. My name is Jordan Briones. Now here's the scenario. You and your partner are playing and one of you pops up the ball. Do you retreat or stand your ground? In today's video, that's exactly what we're gonna talk about. So now, let's jump right in. All right, so no matter how long you've been playing, we've all been part of a game where one of us pops up the ball and now you have a decision to make. You're either gonna A, stand your ground and get really low and try to block the ball that way, or you're going to try to retreat, give yourself some room, and buy a little bit more reaction time so that you can be better prepared for the ball. In this video, I'm going to be talking about when and how to retreat the right way. Yes, you heard that right. There are specific times that you are going to want to actually retreat to give yourself more time to react to the ball so that you can be better prepared for the next one. Now, when does this happen? Sometimes we are getting pushed off the line or sometimes maybe we're just scrambling trying to work our way through the transition zone. So if you find yourself in that position and you're somewhere, let's say here in the transition zone and your opponents are hitting a very offensive ball right at your feet, there's a couple things that you can do to best prepare yourself as you fight and try to stay in the point. The first thing that you want to do is you want to have a wide and solid base, okay? So we want to be a little bit wider than shoulder width. If you could get a little bit wider, that is always gonna benefit you because when you're in this position and your opponent at the net has an offensive ball, they are going to try to nail you right at the feet, okay? So we want a good wide base and we want our paddle position to be waist level or a little bit lower, okay? Good players are going to hit the ball down at the feet, so it makes sense to drop this paddle down because this is where the ball is gonna go. Now, from this camera, I just wanna show you if they are hitting a very offensive ball up here, kinda like chest level and really, really hard, that ball is clearly gonna go out because I have the baseline behind me. So what I wanna do is when my opponents are up at the net and I'm in this position, when they are hitting an offensive ball, I wanna get low, get on the balls of my feet, and I drop my paddle lower, waist level or a little bit lower because I know that they are going to try to come down at my feet. Now the next thing I wanna mention is how important paddle stability is when you're trying to just defend really offensive balls when you're here in the transition zone. Remember, we are in the extreme defense and we are trying to just block the ball back into play. So you can definitely try this with one hand and a lot of players hit the majority of their shots with one hand on their backhand side. But when I am on the extreme defense, I encourage you to put that other hand on there. So I'm gonna add my left hand on top and this is going to give me the stability that I need to block really fast balls, even hard overheads from this transition zone. A key tip here for defense is to get low and in a backhanded position. And right now I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. I have two balls here and I'm gonna place one um, over here and I'm going to place one right over here um, with about two feet or so to the sideline, okay? So when I'm in this position, again, I'm on the extreme defense and my opponent is hitting a very offensive ball. So what I wanna do is play my percentages. So what does that mean? I'm going to drop to a backhanded position. Now, again, like I said, I like to use two hands when I'm trying to play extreme defense. Whether you use one or two, you need to drop to a more backhanded position because if you're playing percentages with a backhand, you can guard or block everything from over here all the way up to here, right? You can actually block balls past your right foot on the backhand side if you need to. So I'm going to drop in this backhand position and if they hit it in this range from this ball to that ball, I can block if I need to, right? Now, this last two to two and a half feet from this ball to the sideline, that is going to be the toughest ball to get regardless. Now, if they hit it there, how do we deal with that? Well, you know, we're gonna try our best and if we see it coming, we can switch to a forehand, right? Or if we have to, 
This is not ideal positioning, but this is what I've done to fight off balls. Because again, if you're getting a really offensive ball hit at you, you're just trying to fight it off to stay in the point. So what you can do is you're low, you have a good split step, and then you can come here and block it like this. Okay, now again, this is not an ideal situation, but if they hit a good shot, we're going to have to come here like this, or we're you know, going to try to come to our forehand side. All right, so before we talk about when and how to retreat when you're getting attacked, we're first going to show you a drill that you can practice that's really important when you're trying to master this transition zone, and especially if you're trying to play good defense. All right, so now let's jump into the big question. When you are on the defense and you get this ball back, if that ball goes high again and they're going to hit another really offensive ball, do we hold our ground or should we take a step back? Now I get this question asked a lot and my answer is if you can retreat in time and then get set and hit a good split step, and you're balanced and ready to go, if you have time for that and you're going to retreat to play some defense, go ahead and do it, okay? There's many times if the ball maybe is just a little bit popped up and you don't have time to retreat and set, then I might just stay here and try to dig it out, right? If I'm getting hit a very offensive ball and it's really, really high and I know that, uh-oh, I'm gonna take a big step back or two steps back and then I'm gonna split and then get ready again because I know another offensive ball is coming. So a big thing here is the decision making and watching the height of that ball, right? If I'm here and I could block a ball into the non-volley zone, right? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna try to get up to this non-volley zone line and, and you know get up back to a neutral position, okay? So if I'm right here again and I block a ball, uh-oh, and it's high, okay? and it's really high where they're actually gonna hit some sort of overhead, right? Then I can take a big quick step back, boom, and then split step. So now in this drill, I'm going to feed that first offensive ball to Katrina and she's gonna do her best to get that ball back into play and she's going to practice stepping back and then split stepping into a good ready position with a good solid base with her weight on the balls of her feet. All right, so for this last drill, Katrina is going to start here in the transition zone, and I'm going to feed her a very offensive ball at her feet, and now she is going to decide, okay? So she's going to try to block this ball into the non-volley zone, or at least have that ball descending down, and if it's good, I want her to advance. I want her to try to gain some ground and then eventually get up to the non-volley zone. But if she hits that ball and it goes really high, we're gonna work on her, you know, her taking those quick steps back and then split stepping, getting in a balanced, ready position, and then try to fight it off from there. And again, when she gets back here, right, she's going to hit the ball. If it's high again, maybe she can stay if she feels like she can handle it, or she's gonna retreat again and give herself more time and more space.
All right, so now that you know when and how to retreat for certain balls so that you can play elite defense and stay in the point, go out there and practice it. Thanks so much for watching us in this video. We really appreciate it and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching. For a free pickleball workout routine that is guaranteed to level up your game, head on to brioniespickleball.com forward slash workout. Before you head on over there, make sure you're subscribed to this YouTube channel and hit that little bell icon so that you can be notified every time we release a new video. Again, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Space